Good evening, everybody. It's 5.05 p.m. and I'm calling tonight's meeting of the planning board to order. Uh, at our June meeting, we agreed we would just have a very brief meeting to uh, review minutes, attend to any urgent business that came up, if any, um, and otherwise adjourn as quickly as possible since it's summer and sort of save our work starting to really dig in until our regular meeting at the end of August. So first, I do want to welcome Becca, uh, Becca Danielson. Hello, Becca. Uh, so she's Hi, now our board assistant. So that's kind of the term we're using. Um, so I'm very excited. So I was going to use this occasion to do a little bit of live reviewing of the minutes, because this is our primary agenda item for tonight from the June meeting, and just use that as sort of an occasion to um, uh, point out some things to Becca, since she'll be doing that in the future. Uh, so with that, uh, let me share. I have the minutes up. So I'm sharing my screen now. Whoop. Why did it say screen sharing is paused? Okay, should all be able to see my screen. Um, so a comment. So I, I wrote up the minutes of our June 26th meeting, circulated it soon after the meeting. I uh, had the draft watermark. Judy, as one of her, you know, she was always very good at uh, reading and turning on track changes. Um, and it would be great. So like now at starting tonight, uh, Becca is taking minutes, so she'll do, this will be easy. She'll do the minutes of tonight's meeting and circulate that for review um, at our next meeting in August. But it would be wonderful, not only if everyone reads the minutes in advance, of our meetings, but um, either sends email comments and corrections to Becca. You can just do this by email or do what uh, Judy was in the habit of doing and, and, and I do that from time to time, which is just opening up the minutes in Word, um, turning on track changes, making any suggested revisions and sending those to Becca. And the idea is that what we wanna have before a meeting for review is, you know, amended minutes or like this marked up minutes that we can simply review, discuss, agree on, and then, um, and I'm, I think it's perfectly fine for there to be multiple rounds in advance of a formal public meeting of revisions to minutes. So it'd be perfectly okay for Becca send out a, cop, a draft copy of minutes for various of us to read it, send comments and corrections to Becca. Becca could make amendments based using her own judgment and comments that we've sent to her in advance. And then there could be kind of like a final draft circulated that we review um, and approve just to streamline the process, right? Um, so, but tonight I'm simply going to take the marked up copy that Judy sent, uh, since I didn't try to accept changes, uh, I'm just going to review her her comments and changes, and then um, call for a motion to approve the minutes as amended. All right, so that's what I want to do as quickly as I possibly can today. Um, so. She made a she made a few editorial changes, always very helpful. So adding some words, legal ad for the first public hearing, I would accept this, change the word review to approval, change them to relevant provisions. That's all good as far as I'm concerned. She had a question about this comment I put in. So what I've Start what I started to try to do in our minutes to make them useful, not only as a public record, but also useful for 
ourselves is to try to do a somewhat better job of noting in the minutes any actions and where there are actions if we assign those actions to a particular you know, person, um, note that in the minutes. And sort of generally when, like last time we talked about the fact that there was some work that needed to be done after our June meeting, before this meeting, getting some materials to the town clerk. Ultimately, I was the one who handled that action. So I simply noted that you know, I, in the mi minutes I wrote action for the board, which probably defaults to me as chair, or means that somehow we have to behind the scenes figure out who's going to take the action, all right? So I'm just going to delete Judy's comment. Um, there was a comment about the content of the minutes versus a re recommended change. So I just sort of want to explain the rationale. And for Becca, I think, as we try going forward to do our best as we work through minutes to capture actions and try to be good at making sure actions are assigned or it's clearly understood who's responsible for doing what during that comes out in a meeting. All right. Um, so then Judy had a comment about the use of the word fact here and I agree with the, the essence of her um, that it, it's probably not appropriate to say that it's truly a fact. We didn't independently verify that. She suggested some other words. I'm going to propose that the word fact be changed to the word or phrase a butter's claim. So in this case, uh, Tim Smith being the abutter in question, made the claim that uh, vehicles were entering and exiting DMCTC's property, driving over his own property. So that would be my proposed. Go ahead, JD. Grant, why aren't we just saying Tim Smith if he's the one that that made the claim? Um, so there's no ambiguity to it. Yeah, we can do that too. I mentioned him. It's a little bit, because yeah. Let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Is, is that Tim Smith's claim that? Yeah, yeah. Because it's also, yeah, I'll just say it is. As well as Tim Smith's claim. So the only thing I'm, it's a little bit awkward just because. I mentioned, I actually identify him in a, in a subsequent sentence. Okay. So, um, well, at least we know looking back from the future, in the future, looking back on this was him and not, not Chris right. Green or another person. Yeah. Right. As well as the, as well as, how about, I'll just revise, I'll just make this clear. As well as, as well as the claim by Tim Smith, butter to the north, driving across his park. So I'm going to make some, I'm just going to clarify it to say, so we talked about the landscape screening as well as the claim by Tim Smith, a butter to the north, that vehicles entering and exiting DMCTC's property were driving across his property due to issues with the layout of the gravel driveway. And that makes it clear enough. Without. All right. And we're going to delete Judy's comment, having addressed it that way. She made a few like minor changes, removing some hyphens, totally fine, I accept that. Um, she made a comment 
on the minutes, didn't make a suggestion, a suggested change. So I'm going to delete her comment. Um, but basically she was asking about this whole process. And I had some email with Judy um, subsequently to our meeting. And basically I'll just sort of say, so the minutes are accurate, so we don't need to revise the minutes. Um, the, the point is that when it comes to the landscape screening, the way I would summarize the situation is that the approved site plan def lays out some landscape screening detail that ha A, have not been implemented, and B, we no longer want implemented, and nor does the abutter to the north, right? So, but the only legally valid way to address this. We can't sort of informally ask DMCTC, even if they want to. And I've had emails with DMCTC, like they're very willing, they're neighborly, they're trying to you know, make everybody happy. Um, but we don't have the legal authority to ask them to submit a revised plan or new documents. I mean, legally we've approved a particular site plan and any deviations from that site plan technically put them in violation. Even if we don't want to enforce it, they would be open to attempts to make them enforce an approved plan that would create grief for an abutter. So in talking to our new town administrator, he's helped me understand the right way to do this, which may seem, as Judy felt, like kind of unnecessary, like maybe in the past, everything has worked out very informally, but Peter Kane stressed to me that in this kind of situation, we, the planning board, have to work through the building commissioner. We have to formally ask the building commissioner to make a determination and provide guidance and direction. And it's only the building commissioner that can provide guidance and direction that's legally binding. And that is captured in a draft letter that I wrote and circulated, but we're not gonna discuss tonight. So I wanna defer that whole matter to August, all right? Uh, I did say that we would, I, I don't know if I said it in the last, time, last meeting that I would draft this letter, um, but I didn't wanna take that up tonight, all right? Um, so Judy was just asking about the process, and I'm sort of reiterating for, the, for all of you and for the record that according to the town administrator, um, yeah, we just can't say, hey, DMCTC, send us a new plan, give us a new planning plan that makes everybody happy, and we'll just sort of treat it as the new approved site plan. That do it just doesn't work that way. And it's not necessarily the case that we need to go through a, another whole formal site plan review either just to address the landscape screening issue. But whatever we do has to be at the direction of the building commissioner. All right, so that's, that's what's going on here. Um, and I think that was, then she, under new business, you know, other changes to most of it. Then she made a few more comments related to the discussion of board priorities for 2025, which again is a topic that we'll resume discussing in August. But she made a few editorial changes, which I'm, I, I think are all fine and perfectly happy to accept. So aside from the live changes that we made about um, updates to River Road, what I would recommend is a motion to approve these minutes as amended. I make a, move, a motion to approve these minutes as amended. Okay, motion has been made. Sarah Second. seconded the motion. We'll do our roll call vote. 
JD made the motion, so you vote. Yes. Sarah? Yes. Laura? Yes. And I vote yes. So what, I'll, what will happen next as a matter of process is I'll accept all of these changes. I'll remove the draft watermark, create a final version, and send this to agenda at waitley.org for hosting uh, on the public website. Okay, so I've stopped sharing. There was one other agenda item that was any items not uh, anticipated within 48 hours of the meeting. And I did circulate this, but we got an email this morning. This morning? Yeah, this morning from Pete uh, Kane, our town administrator, saying that the select board plans is, is creating a new study committee for Waitley to look at ways to regulate the siting and construction of large scale battery storage facilities. And they're looking for designees from a number of town boards, including the planning board. So we've been asked to submit a name, have one of us step up to serve on this, I believe, temporary study committee. So it'll do some work on this topic and submit recommendations to the select board. Um, now, what I will say, I'll just say that I'm personally, you know, willing and interested to do this. I'm, I have some interest in battery storage. I have battery storage in my house. So I'm kind of a stakeholder in the, this is really large scale battery storage, not, um, residential size battery storage. Um, I know that battery storage in the past, I wasn't present when this came up, has been uh, controversial within Waitley. Um, I know that it's been an issue in, it's a, it's a big issue right now in Wendell and in other places in Western Massachusetts. So perfectly willing to put myself up as the planning board representative on this study committee. Um, and I'll simply ask if there's anyone else who feels particularly passionate on the subject because I'm happy, I can easily overcommit myself. So if one of you feels like this is something that you have a particular interest or desire in, then now is it your chance to speak up or comment on the whole topic. All right. I, I'd i be more interested in doing the exit 35 stuff or anything with the housing committee. I really yeah. like this. I know that you, you participated in the housing committee, but that's really, I think what my passion would be, but. Good, no, I think that's, I think that's reasonable. I, I don't anticipate this committee is going to be doing extensive amount of work. Remember Judy, had kind of, she sent a note to Pete about the fact that, uh, you know, the new, new changes in state law were making it even harder to regulate siting of solar facilities yeah. and battery storage facilities through zoning. But there may be other ways to get some degree of local control over such things. And I know there are concerns, right, about, I mean, JD, you brought up the fact that I think that these batteries, if they catch on fire, they're basically chemical fires and can require an inordinate amount of you know, water to put out. And, yep. and there's all issues with protecting our water supplies and things. Putting like that. them in a place where we have adequate water for, to put the fire out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know that's been a big concern in Wendell. That they just don't have great water, you know, just they don't believe they have the kind of water resources to put out a large scale battery fire if one uh, took place. And they don't seem to, anyway. So um, for now, I'm going to respond to Pete and say that I'm going to be the planning board designee on this particular study committee. And like any such study committee, um, whenever any of us are designees to those committees, um, we should think of it as we have an ongoing obligation to 
you know, we're we're serving on those committees as representatives of the planning board, yep. and we have an obligation to bring updates back to the board mm -hmm. when appropriate, um, and just keep every keep us all apprised of anything that's been going on in a in one of these other committees that might be of general interest to the board. Brent, um, Brent, I think just about this whole energy and in general that the technology is going to move 10 times faster than the town and our response to it yeah yeah by the time we say something it's already going to be obsolete it's yeah i mean and i'm i'm i have mixed feelings right i i'm a i believe we need to do something about climate change and climate resilience and and um, renewable energy, and I understand the need yeah. for uh, storage so, because the sun isn't always shining and the wind isn't always blowing. Yeah. But I also understand you read these things about EVs, you know, EV vehicles that catch on fire and suddenly roadways are closed down that. because, right, this just recently happened, right? And uh, people are aware of, uh, of this. So... And I also understand the feelings that people out in Western Massachusetts have about how, uh, you know, lawmakers in Eastern Massachusetts are shoving solutions to the problems out into Western Massachusetts because they feel that they can, as opposed to it being the right thing to do. So there's a, a lot of balancing that needs to go on. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I'm happy to take this okay. on and keep you informed of how things are going. Yep. So that's it for tonight. I have no other items, uh, unanticipated items as anybody else. Okay, very good. So we'll just wrap up before we adjourn to just note that our next regularly scheduled planning board meeting is on Wednesday, August 28th. Um, I anticipate that we will, so some things I'm aware of that will come up on our agenda for August 28th, we'll talk about a letter to the building inspector regarding the matters at uh, Seven River Road and the, um, a request to the building inspector. I did circulate an email that we received from DMCTC regarding um, a, a new proposal they have made about um, ma marijuana manufacturing, where there's some history. So we'll at least have those two items. I don't know of any other, at this point, I haven't seen any applications for site reviews or ANRs or anything like that um, and and then nominally we'll also start talking about um, any tasks or projects that we want to take on as a board leading up to the 2025 annual town meeting so we'll start that now we still have a board vacancy so there's still some things going on outside of the public meeting uh, it would be good to be at full strength again um, having a, but having a good board, <laughs> it's, it's important to have a, a, a collegial board of people willing and able to do the necessary work rather than just filling a, filling a spot. We have still yep. some candidates out there. So we, we may just see where we are on that matter too. And, and in August, that's it. Okay. Uh, so. I'd be happy to hear a motion to adjourn. I make a motion. Sarah Sarah adjourn. Is moving oh, to Sarah adjourn. Sarah. Do we have a second? A second. Okay. Any objections? Hearing none. Thank you. Short meeting. We're adjourned until August 28th. Have a great night.